Welcome! In this video, we're going to go over the project structure for a basic local Android test written in Java using the TestNG framework. Before you can run any tests, you need to open an emulator in Android Studio by going to Tools, Android Virtual Device Manager. Run an emulator that matches the device you have in your code. Once your emulator is up and running, you'll also want to start your Appium server. Open Appium Desktop and click to start the server. Next, let's take a look at the project structure. I'm going to be doing this in IntelliJ IDEA. Inside the source, test, java, test file, you should see a basic test.java as well as a config file, which we'll edit later. Inside resources config, you'll see the XML file that specifies which test to run. And last but not least, the POM XML, which manages Maven dependencies. Now we'll go over the POM XML file. This file is used with Maven in order to give all the important information about a project, as well as the configuration for other plugins and tools that you're using with your Java project. If you scroll down, you can see the dependencies listed include the TestNG testing library, Selenium, tools to log the output and errors in your project, as well as the dependency for the Sauce REST API and Appium. Notice that in the version tag for each of these dependencies, we have a variable. The way that this POM XML is set up is that the version numbers for each of these dependencies is set at the top for easy maintenance and changing. At the bottom of the POM XML file, you'll find the plugins that help you with the build. The Maven Surefire plugin manages test execution and generates log files. In this example, we're going to use the testng XML file to specify which classes, packages, or other types of tests you want to run. The testng XML file helps you organize and control the execution of your tests. You can specify which, which test suites to run, which classes, and other things. Later on, we'll be using it to run tests in parallel. Currently, all it tells us is to run the basic test class. We'll be modifying it later to add more features. Next, we'll take a look at the single test object that we have so far in this testing suite. In the imports list, you'll see many of the plugins and libraries that were specified in POM XML. You'll also see elements of the testng library, including the assert methods and the after, before, and test annotations. These annotations allow TestNG to execute tests in a certain order and access the correct methods at the correct time. At the top of the test class, you'll notice two variables created. The first one, the app variable, gives the absolute path for the APK file where it is stored on your local machine. The Appium variable declares which port the Appium server is running on your local machine. If you go look at the Appium server you have running on your machine, you can see the port that is assigned to it. Next, we're going to take a look at the capabilities for this local Appium test. Capabilities send information in a data object about how and where a test should be run. In this example, we have the device name, platform name, platform version, automation name, as well as the name of the app or location of it as required capabilities. Because this is a React Native app, you also have to add in an app activity or app wait activity to tell it to wait to load the first page. At the bottom of the capabilities, notice that you instantiate the driver with the Appium server location and the capabilities. The last thing we'll touch on in this code overview are the test annotations. There are three basic annotations used here, the before method, the after method, and the test annotations. The before method is invoked before each test annotation in a class, and the after method is invoked after. You can see in this code sample here that before each test annotation, the capabilities are set and a driver is instantiated. When the after method is run after each test annotation, the driver is quit. Next, let's take a look at the test annotations, each of which will have a before and after annotation run. The methods, such as the login method, used in the tests are declared at the bottom of the page. 
although it's not good testing practice to keep these in the same place, it's done here for the sake of simplicity. Now, all you need to do to run your test is open the terminal and run the command maven clean test. You want to make sure that your emulator is up and running, that the version of the emulator matches your code, and that you've started your Appium server. Once you have all your tools up and running, you can run the command maven clean test and see the commands going back and forth through the Appium server. The two tests will do pretty much the same thing by instantiating a driver, logging in, though with two different credentials, and checking to see that you finally end up on the product page.